I had recently ran into a problem with my Guitar Hero controller for the Xbox 360 and we are going to look at it and see if we can get this thing fixed. <clears throat> the version that I've got is the wireless one, that, the Les Paul that came bundled with Guitar Hero Aerosmith and the symptoms that I had on it was this. I hadn't used it for six or seven months, went to turn it on and it was dead. The batteries had died in it. Took the old batteries out, put a fresh set in it. It came on for about maybe 45 seconds or something like that, just long enough to get the game booted off up, and then it turned back off. So I got another set of batteries out. Put those in, nothing. Wouldn't even come on. I went through about five other different sets of batteries, all from different manufacturers, some were fresh out of the shrink wrap, could not get it to power on at all. So I gave up and decided that I was going to try to take it apart to check and see if there was any loose connections or anything that I could uh, do to simple that I could do to fix. When I went to uh, take it apart, of course you have to take the neck and you take the face plate off of the front. I noticed that when I popped the batteries out of the back, the batteries were really hot. Uh, I mean, they were, they were kind of uncomfortable in your hand to hold. And the actual battery connector, the little spring and the flat part, the metal on the inside of the battery holder, was hot enough to burn my finger. And this is all after it sat in the floor with the batteries in it, not powered on for maybe five minutes or something like that. And you could actually smell a faint whiff of burnt plastic. And I wasn't for sure if I was just crazy about that or what, which that's what made me take it apart and look at it. And you'll see what I'm talking about. So here we've got our controller taken apart. This thing's really easy to come apart. You've got a handful of screws all the way around the edge here that are uh, Torx bit screws. You've got one screw that's hidden underneath a sticker right here, but the rest of them are real easy to see. When you separate the two halves, it's gonna be connected by this wire here. This wire goes into this circuit board here. It's a power wire. You can put it back in backwards if you're not careful. So just be sure that you pay attention to the direction that it goes in. There's a little notch on the very top of it that will uh, make it so that you put it in the right direction. You just have to look at that notch. The situation that I found myself in when I got this thing down here, I got my voltmeter out. First thing I did was check for continuity on the power and the battery connectors. Everything looked good. I went to check the voltage and with a fresh set of batteries on the end of the connector here I was getting 0.2 volts which obviously is not what it should be so I kind of just put all of this to the side because I knew I wasn't even getting the proper voltage out of here with the battery pack as far as this goes there's really not a lot of components you got this wire with a connector at the top it goes down You've got a little tiny PCB, you've got the battery connectors, and then you've got this one capacitor right here. This capacitor is a 10 volt, uh, 2200 microfarad capacitor. And I'm almost 100% positive this is the problem with this board. These things are about a 10 cent part, but the fact that you only need one of them, if you don't have them handy, you're gonna to have to get like a double pack or something. You're probably not gonna be able to find just one of them for sale. So you're gonna to have to pay a dollar or two for one capacitor and then a dollar or two to get it shipped to you. But if you buy them in bulk or if you already had them, probably get them for five cents a piece. Now, the main reason that I wanted to point this out in this and even bother making a video about this 
is if you run into problems with the Guitar Hero controllers and you search about bad capacitors or components that need to be replaced, the majority of the results are talking about the PS3 Guitar Hero controllers. And there's people saying, oh, I could get mine to power on, but it wouldn't sync, or I couldn't get mine to power on at all. And I replaced a 10 volt capacitor on it, which that's what this is, is a 10 volt capacitor. But apparently the one that's in the PlayStation controller uh, or the PlayStation 3 guitar, there's two 10 volt capacitors in it and they are not the same size. They are not the same capacitance as these Xbox 360 ones. Um, they are like a 10th of what this size is. This is 2,200 and the ones on the PS3 controller are just 220. So they are 10 times smaller than the capacitance on this 360 one. But this is a real easy, quick thing to swap out if you have any experiencing in soldering whatsoever. You've just got these two points right here and then there was a little piece of hot glue holding it down against the holder so that it doesn't get bent or flop around inside the case. So I've got my replacement capacitor. I'm gonna pull this old one out, slap this new one in real quick, and see if we can get it fixed. Okay, so I got my new capacitor soldered in. I got it held down with a little piece of tape right here. I didn't lay the hot glue to it yet because I wasn't for sure if it was gonna work or not. Um, if you happen to get a pack of these, I don't know how familiar you are with you are with electronics. Not that I'm an electronic genius or anything, but just in case you're not too familiar with soldering and capacitors or electronic components or whatever, whenever you put a capacitor in, it's got a positive and a negative leg, and you have to put it in the proper direction or it's going to mess everything up. These here, the replacements were actually the same brand just by coincidence, I didn't order them on purpose, but they were the same exact brand that this controller originally came with. On a capacitor, the positive leg is always longer, as you can see, here's the positive. And then these capacitors always have, also have a big negative symbol on the actual thing itself, showing that that's the negative leg. And this is the longer positive leg. Then of course, if you look at the little thing here, it's got it noted positive and negative, and positive is on the, the right, negative is on the left. But I got two new batteries put in it. Nothing is smoking, nothing is melting the plastic or caught on fire like it did previously, which is a good sign. I can actually touch the terminals. They're not burning my fingers when I touch them, and we'll see what we get. On the meter 2.62 not 0 0.2 like we did before but we'll reassemble this thing and see if we got it fixed and it looks like we've got it lined out I've sat here and played with it for about 15 minutes now I've had no problems at all everything works fine all the buttons work uh, no problems with it powering off uh, the batteries haven't overheated and caught on fire and burnt my house down like they were fixing to do before. So it looks like this is a success. If you've got a Guitar Hero controller that won't power on, check out that capacitor. Take five minutes to put a new one in and you've saved yourself some money.